Alright, let's pick it up. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude.
one, checking Fox Mike. Lima Charlie, you me? Same. Okay, one is ready to taxi. Roger. My HSI is fine again, so go ahead and contact the ground. Let's move on and continue where we left off. You still have those waypoints we introduced earlier in the second flight plan? Uh, I messed things up playing with them while waiting for you. I accidentally deleted the train flight plan, but added waypoints to the original one we had. Alright, then take your time and rebuild the second flight plan using the waypoints from the knee board for me. Remember about closing the rectangle by adding the first waypoint at the end, okay? Right. On it. And done. Train flight plan is ready. Good. Contact ground one ready. Two is already up. Roger. Totopaw ground, Tusk 1 is 2 A-10s at Bravo Ramp, ready for taxi with Charlie. Tusk 1, Charlie is current. Taxi Bravo, Foxtrot, Alpha, hold short runway 32 at Alpha. Contact Silverbow on 257.9. Bravo Alpha, hold short of 32 and Silverbow on 257.9 or Tusk 1 1. Didn't really see Bravo Foxtrot Alpha. Okay. Bravo is here. Foxtrot. No. What? Bravo Foxtrot Alpha. Okay.
Why do I hear the engine meowing? One's rolling. Okay, he took off, but there was no communication. I mean, that's okay. Let's see. Warning, autopilot.
seriously I can hear the ball bearings. like the cockpit is open but it's not Being 
black, a lot of stuff was kept in charge, figuratively and literally. I'd imagine. So what did these folks tell their families what they were doing all week way up in the high desert? The story was that they were doing stuff with A7s up there. A7s, huh? That's funny. In hindsight, yeah, it's pretty funny covering up what at the time was one of the most advanced and revolutionary aircraft in history with fluff. So these days they just keep most of the retired F-117s and Type 1000 stores here just in case we need to bring them back into service. If the internet is to be believed, there's still some flying around these days. Yeah, I saw some, I mean, something about that the other day on the internet. Hmm. Maybe if it's true, we'll see one. Wouldn't that be something? Warning, autopilot. And then we'll see how they work in practice. Sounds good? Yeah, sounds okay. Good. Please pay attention as this part can be quite tricky and rather complicated. I'll try to make it as straightforward as possible. I'm all ears. Cool. So each waypoint has a certain set of attributes assigned to it. These can be set either for the flight plan or for the individual waypoints independent of the flight plan. We can view those in a number of ways, but first, let's focus on the flight plan one. Go ahead and put the AAP steer dial into flight plan mode, press the nav button on the CDU, and choose the attribute page. Okay, AAP steer set to flight plan and waypoint attribute page is selected. Okay, first attribute is Flight slope indicator sensitivity. Sensitivity is measured by the dots on the HSI and ADI. Raj. The second attribute determines the steer mode with four different options. Two from, two to, direct, and SCS. Let's have a closer look at these, okay? Yeah, okay. Two from is the default setting for the attribute. What it basically does is it allows you to determine the desired course to or from the given waypoint using the HSI knob. This is especially useful if you want to perfectly align yourself with the runway or set up on an attack run with a very specific heading. Okay, makes sense. The 2-2 attribute computes the line between two waypoints. In this mode, the HSI knob will be used to align the course arrow with the heading displayed on the attribute for a consistent course deviation indicator, ADI bank steering bar, and CDU position page cross-track deviation indication. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know, it sounds complicated at first, but it'll get easier when we do some practical exercises. Direct is the third steer mode. This one is much more straightforward as it sets the course from the aircraft position when direct mode is selected to the current steer point. As with the 2-2 mode, you will use the HSI knob to align the course arrow with the heading displayed on the CPU attribute page. Right. And finally, in the SCS mode, the commanded course is a manually selected course away from the point where the aircraft was located at when SCS was selected. So you'll want to set it using the HSI. 
outside court is the left side. All right. Next tribute is the vertical navigation mode, which you can find on the right side of the CPU screen. It has two settings, 2D and 3D. In 2D, only horizontal data will be passed onto the HSI and ADI, so you won't get the steering key to intercept the waypoint altitude. Okay, Raj. The 3D mode allows to have a vertical angle computed either automatically or entered manually. This will then give you the possibility to use also the vertical steering cues of your ADI. Yeah, got it. Nice. Let's prepare a few more things and we can move on and do some practical exercises. Cool? As ready as one can be. Loving the enthusiasm. So first, let's get the hang of 2-2 two, two and 2-from two mode. Press FPM on your CPU and press the second line select key on the right, mark the small arrow next to the train flight plan. Okay, I've done that. I can see a list of waypoints that I've added before. Yep, you'll see a small arrow next to each one and WPTATT text above. Pressing each of the arrows will take you to the attribute subpage specific for that given waypoint or the selected flight plan. Press the arrow next to waypoint 11 or the first train 1. Done. I've got the whole list of settings that you just described. Exactly. We just go as it is and change the gear setting for me into 2 2 mode. Alright, done. Perfect. Now press the flight plan menu button on the CDU again. Then enter the train flight plan and do the same thing for all of the waypoints in there. So we're going to leave train 4 as 2 from. Let me know when you've done all that. Okay, all waypoints are set according to instructions. Very good, now choose train flight plan as our active one, and set the waypoint changing to auto. Next, select waypoint 14 or train 4 as your steer point. Okay, done. Our aim will be to get there flying a very specific heading. Currently, waypoint 14 should be somewhere to our 7 or 8 o'clock, which is indicated by the thin arrow on your HSI. Hey, firm. Okay, use the HSI course select knob and set the desired course to 270. Once you've done that, you will notice that the CDI needle has moved away from the course arrow, which is currently pointing directly to the left. Right? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. In order to align ourselves directly with the desired course, we will need to first go north for some time. Go ahead and turn heading 360 and keep 270 knots indicated. Watch as the CDI is closing to the center of your HSI. And when it is one dot away, start a 15 degree left hand turn and try and align yourself perfectly with the steer point.
warning autopilot. All right, I'm aligned and on course. Great. Now press the nav button on the CPU and select the attribute subpage. In the lower right corner, you'll see that your HSI is set as force 270 or thereabouts. This is a digital readout of what you have set on your HSI using the nav. Either I did something wrong or this doesn't work. Okay, so I had to turn that on. Okay. Yeah, got it. Staying on this page means your steer point up to the second train one waypoint, the one closing the flight plan. As you have previously set its tribute and it is in 2 2 mode, the text is changed and says dial HSI course 256 X ray. Go ahead and set that course on the HSI. Okay, done. As you're approaching waypoint 14, you'll see that the CDI is aligning with the course arrow. Try and have it aligned perfectly in the middle as you turn and continue towards waypoint 11.
Yeah, so... Yeah, <clears throat> I might have missed that. Then I need to put that into steel point mode. And then the HSI will show me stuff. So line at the first dot, 15 degrees turn. Left and right, you will notice that it has no impact on the CDI needle, which remains in 
plane. This is because in true two mode you'll use the course set to align your course arrow with the desired route. Now return to nav page, press the attribute sub page, move one waypoint up to waypoint three, set the course accordingly, and turn when ready. Warning, autopilot. The worst thing about this is that I vaguely remember doing this once. Like a long, long time ago. En route to waypoint 13. Warning, autopilot. Okay, done. As you can see, the CDI will move towards the center as you align the course arrow with your current steer point. This is the main difference between the two from mode where you choose the heading you want to use in order to get to the selected steer point, and the two two mode which can be best described as a line connecting the previous waypoint to the current steer point. Roger. Right on. The last two things I wanted to show you today in relation to the waypoint attributes are direct and 3D modes. For starters, once again, go 
to the flight plan menu page and choose the MSN flight plan as the active one. Okay, main flight plan selected. Now press the arrow next to the asterisk under flight plan build. Navigate to waypoint 6, which should be next to position 07, and enter the tribute page. Okay, done. Now do me a favor, turn towards the waypoint 6, and then set the gear setting to direct. Warning, when autopilot. That when you press it, it plus the course from the position of your aircraft to the selected waypoint. In this mode, turning the HSI knob will not move the CDI as your aircraft should now follow an imaginary line between the point in which you switch the waypoint to direct mode and the current steer point. Uh, let me get this clear. So I can set the direct mode beforehand, but the CDU will start computing the course at the exact moment when I select this waypoint as a steer point for the first time. Exactly. So if you align yourself at the given waypoint and then set the attribute to direct, you will be on the correct course from the outset. As soon as you set the attribute, the nav attribute space will give Warning, you the correct autopilot. need to align the course needle. Okay, roger. It works as a 2-2 mode, but treats the initial position of the aircraft as a previous waypoint. So, what about the 2-D and 3-D modes? Yeah, man, that's it. Let's keep waypoint 6 as the current steer point. Press waypoint button on the CDU, and then use OSV-7 or the first line select you see on the right to enter the waypoint subpage. Alright, I'm on the waypoint subpage now. Press 6 on the numpad and press OSB 19 or the left line select C1. Done. You'll see that the elevation is set to 10,000 feet. Go ahead and change it to 15,000 feet by typing it on the and then press an OSB 18 or left line select 2. Alright, the altitude's now set. Let's take a look at your ADI. The vertical steering arrow on the left will be way up, showing you that you need to climb in order to intercept the required altitude of the waypoint. It will give you steering cues similar to the ones used for glide slope on ILS lanes. Cool, pretty neat. What happens if I change the attribute? Um, it'll disappear. Okay, that's it. Pretty sure it'll take some time before all that knowledge sinks in. Practice it as often as you can and play with the attributes. Raj. Just remember to change the attributes for waypoints in flight plan mode. You have to do that via the flight plan menu page. In mission mode, you can do that through the general attributes. In nav mode or separately for each waypoint menu. Got it. Good deal. The last thing to remember is that 2 2 mode will only work correctly if you cycle the waypoint up, but won't work if you're going backwards. And with that, we'll conclude today's lesson on waypoint attributes. Let's pass waypoint 6 and clean quiet for a moment, and I need to drink some water and rest my voice for a minute.
Warning, autopilot.
Okay, set. Sweet. As I've said before, you will notice that the desired time Morning, on target autopilot. has also changed in order to be in line with the introduced desired time to go. I'll take a look at your HUD. Below your current speed, you will notice a letter R with the value next to it. A firm. That's the required speed and it hangs there from time to time, like before as well. Promo, Sherlock. Yeah, sometimes those values are added in the cartridge. In order to get rid of it, you'll need to enter the attribute page and press the LSK or OSB next to desired time on target or time to go, and it will disappear. Okay, now match your speed with the required value. Copy. As you do so, take a look at the right side of your HUD. You can see the remaining time followed by a flash and value with a plus or minus in front. A firm. This shows you how many seconds before or after the desired time you will arrive if you keep your current speed. So if there's a plus, it means you're going too fast and will arrive too early. If there's a minus, you're too slow and will arrive too late. Got it? Plus is I'm too fast, minus too slow. Gotcha.
Time's up. Where are you in relation to waypoint A? It's going too slow. Still got some ground to cover before I reach waypoint A. Okay, I think you've got the hang of it. That's it for today. I know we're probably supposed to cover some more stuff, but I think it's enough for one day already. With the flight plan, I'll contact Blackjack and clear us out of the range. Please ensure you're still on 377.8. 377.8 is set. Blackjack, Tusk 1 is exiting through X ray. Tusk 1, Tusk, thanks for coming through. Have a good one. Yep, anytime. See y'all soon. Gun on this.
Altitude, altitude. Okay, I'm safe on the deck. Guys, right, taxi back to Thunder and I'll catch up with you there. Cusp 1-1, Dallas Tower, maintain at Alpha, contact ground on 275.8. Roger, vacate Alpha, contacting ground, Tusk 1-1. Let's pretend nobody saw that. 